Thank you very much for uh, the invitation. I am very glad to give uh, this seminar about uh, near manifold and so manifold talk. Of this manifold. So at the beginning of the talk, I will give an overview about soul manifold and new manifold and give uh, some uh, result about complex structure on such uh, manifold, such type of manifold. We see difference in the literature about classification and so on. And then I will focus on Hermitian geometry on this type of manifold, in particular uh, on a type of Hermitian geometry, which in the literature I call strong scalar with torsion matrix or pluriclose matrix. And they have relation with other type of geometry, for instance, with symplectic geometry, and also with generalized complex geometry. And I will say some results related to these two types of geometry. So let's start and remind you what, what will be the type of manifold that we will consider. So we will have a new manifold or sole manifold it will be a compact quotient of a simply connected really group which will be important for new manifold case or sol solvable for sole manifold case. And gamma will be a lattice, so a co-compa that is creates a group or G. Um, in the talk, when the type of complex structure that we will study will be invariant. What does mean invariant complex structure on the quotient of G over gamma? It means so that the complex structure comes from a left invariant complex structure on the Lie group G. So it means that is induced by a complex structure on the Lie -Aki. So working with invariant complex structure on an in manifold or on a sole manifold will be equivalent to work on complex structure on the Lie of the group. And in particular, we are interested in a special case. Uh, and here we will see a difference between nil manifold and sole manifold. And the special case of complex manifold that we will see is the case of complex manifold which have holomorphic trivial canonical bundle. What does it mean? It means that there exists on such complex manifold and on zero holomorphy and zero form. And it's a complex dimensional form. Uh, the first difference between important group and solvable group is about the existence of lattice. For an important case, it's in some sense easy to find the lattice uh, by result by Malchev. Uh, what's happening in the important case? The first thing that one can use is that if one takes the exponential map from the Lie algebra to the group, the important group, this is a different morphism. And there is a very simple criteria, as I say, for the existence of lattice. This is the result by Marshall and say that if you take a simple connecting pose in the group G, then there exists a lattice, gamma, or G, if and only if the Lie algebra G is a basis for which the structure constants are rational. So if you find a basis for which the structure constants are in Q, then automatically you have a lattice. And this is what is called to have a rational structure in Q such that if you take the, the tensor product of such algebra GQ times R, you get your Lie algebra G, your real Lie algebra G. And this is exactly what one says that G is a rational structure. In the case of solvable group, unfortunately, the situation is much more difficult. Uh, in fact, you, we still have the G's diffeomorphy to Rn, if n is a dimension of the group, but in this case, the exponential map from the Lie algebra to G is not necessarily injective or subjective, so we don't have any nice property, and there is in general no simple criteria for the existence of lattice for G. A necessary criteria is given by Milner, and it is exactly just that in general for a D group, if you have a Lie group and the lattice, then G is unimodular. What does mean unimodular? It means that if you take the joint representation at X for any X in the Lie algebra G, the trace of at X is zero. There is also another criteria, a necessary condition found by Garland, and is involving the near radical, but nothing more. 
a simple case where you can construct a lattice, and we'll talk a little bit about this case, is the almost a billion case. What does it mean that the little group is almost a billion? It means that uh, G is a semi-direct product of R times R M, where M plus one is the dimension of G, of course. So that means that the Lie algebra has a, a co-dimension one a billion in there. That's exactly the condition. And in this case, there is a result uh, due to Bok. Um, let's say that he, to, the, in an almost a billion group as a lattice, if and only if, okay, you have a similar product. So you have an action give, given by the map mu of R on RM. And the condition is that there exists a T0 different from zero such that the action corresponding to mu t0, if you look the matrix, then this matrix is conjugate to an integer matrix. And in this situation, the lattice is constructed uses exactly what? The, the map p that you use to conjugate your mu t0 to the integer matrix. In fact, the lattice is just given by t0 z, zeta and semi direct product with what? The lattice that you have, theta m in Rm, but on the on the group that you are considering. So using the inverse of p. Um, before to talk about complex structure, since uh, the, the type of Hermitian geometry that we consider will be a type of non kähler geometry, I would say a few things what is known about the existence of kähler structure. And um, for me, many for uh, uh, the situation was clear um, around the, at the end of 80 because there is there are two independent proofs. One is by Benson and Gordon, and the other one is by Azegawa. The proof by Benson and Gordon is using the Ardlesh property, in fact, of scalar manifold, and Azegawa is using the minimal model. Uh, of uh, uh, the, the property that uh, a Keller manifold, manifold, the minimal model has to be formal in the Sullivan sense. And both proofs show that the, uh, the only the manifold which admits a Keller structure, here we don't, we forget about invariant geometry, just Keller structure, invariant, not invariant. If and only if the nil manifold is a complex of. So the group is a billion. Um, Benson and Gordon, uh, two, two years later in another paper, um, conjecture the same property for a manifold. They conjecture that if I saw manifold here, saw manifold in manifold, I say from the beginning, I always mean compact manifold, a compass of manifold. If a saw manifold is a care structure, then it is a compact structure. Okay. And this was first, uh, more or less on the same time, there was the first proof. Uh, in the um, completely solvable case, what does mean that uh, the sol manifold is completely solvable? It means that the group is completely solvable. So it means that the joint representation is only real eigenvalues. And they prove, our uh, Cortez proof, that the previous conjecture holds in the completely solvable case. And then at the Gawa, show that this general result. That in fact the structure of scalars and manifold is known, and it is given by this theorem: a star manifold as a scalar structure, if it only is, it is not really a complex structure, but it is a finite quotient of a complex torus. So that means that it is the total space of a complex torus over a complex torus. So the scalar situation is known. And now let's see what is known about uh, invariant complex structure. First on in manifold and then on sol manifold. Um, Solomon showed this uh, um, theorem, this result, that uh, say, in fact, that any time you have an imposable algebra, which admit a complex structure, then you can find a basis of 1, 0, 4. Let's say that 2n is the real dimension of G. So that we have omega 1, omega n, 1, 0, 4, such that the first one, 
is closed. So the omega one is zero. And what about the other one? The other one uh, belongs always to the ideal generated omega i minus one in what? In the span of all the forms, the one zero form and the zero one form. Okay. This in particular imply, related to what I say at the beginning, if you take the wedge of omega 1, wedge omega n, then by the Peters property, the omega 1 wedge omega n is n0 form, which is closed, is automatically closed. So the canonical bundle of an E-manifold with an invariant complex structure is always trivial, holomorphically trivial. Okay, um, let's see what is known about classification results for this is a complex structure on an important Lie algebra. And um, in dimension six, the real important Lie algebra are classified in 34 classes by uh, result by Manin and then by Gotze and Kakimidyanov, uh, much later. And Alamon showed that 18 classes of these 34 classes as a complex structure. What is now in higher dimension? The, the, the situation in higher dimension is much more complicated because first we have family of Newtonian algebra, not isomorphic Newtonian algebra, depending on parameter in dimension A. And there are some results in this relation by Adela Latorre in her PhD thesis and in joint paper with Fugarte and Raquel Villacamp. And so for instance, it turns a role uh, that the complex structure um, send an element in the center or not, and so on. So there are special properties of the complex structure that can produce a classification or not. What is now about sol solvable case? Uh, there is a paper by Rando where they cl she classified solvable algebra, which admits a complex structure. Um, and this is the only known classification for solvable is only in dimension four. Then there are other classification. In the case that other, you suppose that the group is a special type, the solvable group, or the complex structure is a special type. Here I mentioned result by people, and then I will mention the result that I obtain in this um, direction. So the first result is by Nakamura, and it's about what is called complex parallelizable effects on manifold. So this is um, the case when the solvable Lie algebra has a complex structure, which is by invariant. This means by invariant, it means that the complex structure commutes with the joint representation. So it means that the complex structure is the one that makes a group really complex group. And Nakamura classifies such solvable Lie algebra in dimension six and eight. Then later, there is a classification by Andrada, Barberis, and Dalton, and is about six dimensional solvable Lie algebra, we can meet again a special type of abelian complex structure. So what does mean this condition? It means so that the bracket of Jx, Jy is equal to the bracket of x and y for every x and y in the Lie algebra. That means so that if you take the, the eigenspace with respect to y, g10, this is a that's also give the name abelian complex structure. And then there is a more recent result by Angela Utah in Nakampa, where there is a classification of complex structure um, in uh, solvable Lie algebra, dimension six, and the complex structure is a split in time. What does mean split in time? It means that the, in fact, the Lie group is a semi-direct product of type C, semi-direct product, a copy of CL of an important, let's say, an important Lie group of even dimension with an invariant complex structure, and the action given by semi-direct product is uh, particular, okay? So it means that, uh, for instance, the action is by holomorphic automorphism of the important uh, group, and also you have a, a semi-simple action of uh, the action given by the semi-direct product on the Lie algebra. Um, I will present now two results about classification. First one was the result that I got, uh, with um, Otale Ungarte, and is regarding, in fact, sol manifold with 
in one complete structure such that the, three, the canonical bundle is holomorphic in three k. And the reason to consider this case is fair, but because in the manifold is always the case. And if you look in the complex dimension two, um, the situation is quite restrictive because if you take compact complex surfaces with holomorphically trivia canonical bundle, then you only have k three surfaces of a torus, which is in particular in many. So, uh, what is the picture in higher dimension, six dimensional for this case? Um, we total a work there with, first of all, we classify the unimodular solvable, the algebra, of course, is not important because an important case we already know, the classification by solvable, which have made a complex structure with a non zero close 304, if and only if it is isomorphic to this list of algebra. Um, I would say um, that, uh, in fact, we show with Otal Uberti that the condition for the sol manifold, when the invariant complex structure, when the complex structure is invariant, the condition to, to have holomorphical trivial canonical bundle is equivalent to a condition on the existence of a non zero close and zero four on G. So it reduces to problem at the level of the algebra. So we have now a classification and um, we show that any simply connected, connected group with the Lie algebra, the Lie, one of the least before, has a lattice. And the situation is a little bit different from for the second Lie algebra for the case G2 in the list, this G2 alpha. Um, this Lie algebra in particular is almost a villain. Okay, we'll go uh, in the moment in the case of almost a villain. Anyway, any k different from zero, gk as a lattice. Um, for k equal to two, there is a little bit of strange situation because there is a countable number of different alpha, including alpha equal to zero, for which g2 alpha as a lattice. This is what we show. Of course, in this way, you get compass on many. So maybe for say we follow morphically trivial canonical bound. And um, if we look at the list before, the first two, you can see the first one is the composable and the second one also, but both are almost abelian. So a natural question is uh, what happened for almost abelian the algebra dimension six with a couple structure. And this is exactly a recent result that I obtained with my PhD student, Fabio Pradiso, and we classify uh, in the composable, also the composable, but here I put only the list of in the composable, because you can see from the list that is already long. And we classify unimodular almost a billion the algebra, which have a copy structure. We also obtain the classification in non-unimodular case. And we have a list of this the algebra. And now that we have some result about complex structure, let's do some geometry on this type of manifold. And um, we, I will uh, define what does mean essentially that an Hermitian metric in general on a complex manifold is SKT or polyclos. Um, so let's take in general an Hermitian metric. Manifold. So we have a couple structure, we have a metric, which is a medium, so it's compatible with the couple structure. Um, it is well known, uh, there, there is a result by Rudishon that show that there are there is a one parameter family or what they call canonical connection, which are a medium connection, so our connection, which are uh, which preserve the couple structure, we preserve the metric, the Riemannian metric, and which have a special condition on the torsion. Um, here I will call the torsion of the connection in the same way, um, in the, the two type, if it is of type 1, 2 or 0, 3, using the metric, okay? And the condition in particular in this family, the, the unique one, a medium connection, which is called in the literature bismuth connection or stronger connection, such that the torsion is Q-symmetric, 
the one of tab zero free, is Q symmetric in all the elements. So it is a free form. And um, all these connections, which are determined by the torsion, are um, one can describe also in terms of the torsion. And the torsion is related essentially to what is called the fundamental form of uh, the region structure. And for bismuth connection, it's just given by this way. So if we take the bismuth connection, we take the Levi-Civita connection, we use the metric, and then the difference is just given by what? You take the fundamental form, mega, and you apply the operator VC, which is given in this way, or you can define terms in the bar in an equivalent way. So we can define what is called a metric, a metric met to be strong killer with torsion SKT. In the killer case, of course, the bismuth connection coincides with the Levi-Civita, so we will be cons consider the non-killer case, and we will say that the Armitian metric is SKT or strong killer with torsion if the torsion of the bismuth connection is closed. So the free form that we considered before is this closed, and if you read the condition in terms of the fundamental form. It means that you have an Armitian metric such that the fundamental form is the bar closed. Um, there is another important notion of Armitian metric. Here, I identify Armitian metric G with the fundamental form, and um, it's the notion of Boudouchon metric. That means that if M is the complex dimension of M, that the D bar of the power wedge of omega n minus one times is zero. Um, the big difference here between the Duchamp metric and the SPT metric is in higher dimension, complex dimension higher than two, because for complex dimension two, the Duchamp and the SKT metric coincide. And also it's very, it's quite different than behavior because um, for the Duchamp metric, if you work in a compound manifold and you take an Hermitian Matrix and you take the conformal class, then in the conformal class, by a good show result, you can show that always you have a good show matrix in the conformal class. This is not true for SKT metric in higher dimension. The SKT metric, in fact, are not so uh, common on a medium manifold. And to study this type of geometry, I will use. In general, if you want to study invariant geometry on mean manifold or solid manifold or more in general, called the quotient of a group by a lattice, uh, you can consider what is called the symmetrization process. And the idea is the following to use that the group is unimodular, and then you have a, a bi-invariant volume four. Using the, this bi-invariant volume four, on the compact quotient, in fact, using integration, in fact, you can go from a structure, a geometric structure, which is not invariant, to something which is invariant. Okay? And uh, we, Belgun is the first one. They use this uh, symmetrization process and they used to study, in fact, uh, locally conformally killer structure on so manifold in dimension four. And the process is a follow that you can apply. So let's take a compact quotient of a group by lattice. And suppose, and let's take an invariant J. So here, left environments, the, 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 the complex structure is left in my G. And let's take, suppose that omega is a fundamental form of a non-invariant element. So what you can do, and is a complex dimension, you can do the power wedge of omega and minus one times. And by integration, you can see that you get something which in fact the n minus one time of some left invariant the metric metric on G. Okay, the fundamental form of such form. So from this process, you get some starting. You start with something which is a metric, a medium metric which is not uh, invariant to an medium metric which is invariant. Uh, I use this in result um, with Grancherov, for other type of medium metric, for the balance metric, for which the fundamental form is uh, 
concludes, and we're going to use for SKT case. And essentially, the, 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 the idea is the same. So if uh, you have an emitter matrix, which is SKT, then by the previous process, you get something which is SKT. And the, and the key is that you use all the time, K is in fact invariant, the cobble structure is invariant. Okay, let's see what is known about now the existence of SKT structure or nil manifold and sol manifold. Um, for nil manifold, I show with uh, dimension is clear. In fact, if you have a six dimensional nil manifold, let's say J invariant complete structure and G any compatible matrix, then the existence of an Hermitian SKT matrix is completely determined in terms of the complex structure. So what does it mean? If a complex structure has an SKT matrix, any other compatible matrix is also SKT. And the condition is the following, that there exists a basis of one zero form that have such structure equation. The first two are closed and the other one are given by this um, expression and where A, B, C, D, A are complex structure. And then later we have to find this, uh, this um, condition up to equivalence for our complex structure. And of course, by this condition, you can classify um, then real important six dimensional Lie algebra, which admit an SKT metric. Um, later, it turned out we try with Andrietti and Pezzoni to generalize the previous result because in uh, dimension six, what happened that the group is over two steps. So the real manifold is over two steps. So the commutator is contained in the center. And um, we need an extra assumption to prove the same result. And the assumption is not only that J is invariant, but that G1, so the commutator plus J of G1 is a big. And then we show that G, the big group, has to be through step. And then the mean manifold is a principal holomorphic torus bundle of electrons. Um, I would say that it's still open to see if uh, one removes the assumption G1 plus J G1 to be a billion, um, the result is true. But on the other hand, all the examples, SKT new manifold that are now, for instance, dimension eight, probably the result is still true without uh, any extra assumption. Um, all the examples of SKT manifold have the property that the commutator G1 plus J G1 is a bit. Um, would be nice, of course, to, to solve uh, this, uh, this problem. And the cue for proving this result that we will use also later related to simplectic geometry is to show that J has to preserve the center. So we show that, in fact, this is always true without any assumption. If you take J variant, then J has to preserve the center. Okay, um, if we look now in dimension four sol manifold case, uh, real dimension six, and the case when J invariant as a homomorphically trivial canonical bundle, then the existence of SKT in this case is quite restricted because you have only the level of the algebra, we have only two cases. This, of course, here we are always taking sol manifold, non manifold. G02, the case which is reducible, and G4, this Lie algebra, which is the first one is almost a billion, and the second one not. Um, and I would say that every complex structure with you know, zero close for zero form in the first Lie algebra or in the second one emits SKT matrix. And the first one emits also Keller. Uh, what we did with uh, Paradiso, and here we use the nice characterization found by Arroyo and La Fonte. Here I, I will not describe the characterization, but they characterize in general um, how are the structure of SKT almost a billion algebra. 
in terms of the product. So this, uh, in general, normal civilian uh, algebra of dimension 2n, we have dimension 2n, will be the semi-direct product of R, semi-direct product with R 2n minus 1. And in fact, they determine everything in terms of the, the action of uh, R over the, the, the other part, the, on the abelian ideal, for dimension one ideal. And we show uh, with uh, Fabio that in fact in dimension six, if you take non curly model of abelian algebra, again, non-important, I mean, you have only this algebra. In the unimodular case, you can see that we have family. In fact, they depend on parameters. And two are irreducible and decomposable. And the last three are decomposable. One, the third one, like five plus one, as I mentioned, and the, the last two, four plus two. We'll go back to this list later. And let's see now a link between SKT matrix and uh, simplicity geometry. A link is given by a flow. There are now many flow evolving Hermitian structure preserving special type of uh, Hermitian matrix. And in particular, there is a very nice one introduced by Strix and Chan, uh, evolve an SKT matrix. So you have an Hermitian manifold in general. Let's call G0 the starting metric and omega zero the starting fundamental four. Then they evolve metrics. So you have a family omega t of a metric of fundamental four is equivalent, evolving in the direction of what? The opposite of what? Row B will be the rich form of the bismuth connection. In general, the rich form, the bismuth connection is not to tie one one. So we are going to take the part the one more part of such rich form of the bismuth connection. And what is nice that in the comma case, Sri Tian show that short time is easy for this flow. So if you start with an SKT metric, then for, there is a small epsilon and unique solution. So you have a short time is easy and uniqueness also to the pluriclose flow with initial condition. Okay, the solution is defining a small integral uh, containing of containing zero. Um, if the starting fundamental form is Keller, then omega t is a unique solution to the Keller rich flow. So the, this flow in some sense is nice because in the Keller case is exactly the Keller rich flow. Okay, let's see in particular what uh, are the static solution in this flow. So it means so that you have an SKT matrix such that the bismuth connection is the, the, the Ricci form, the one one part of the Ricci form of the bismuth connection is proportional to the fundamental form. And this generalizes the Keller Einstein case because if you have Keller plus static, it's exactly the Keller Einstein case. And what's shown by Sri and Tian that if you have a static SKT metric in the sense before, and the previous lambda is different from zero, then there is this, uh, in fact, the omega, the fundamental form, is a one one form of a simplectic form timing j. What does it mean that the simplectic form times j? It means that omega x j x is positive for any x different from zero. So it means that the one one is exactly what I wrote. So the one one part of omega with respect to j is definitely positive. And this is what it is called in the literature as a medium symplectic structure. And here we will see that the situation is quite different for complex surfaces, compact complex surfaces, and eigenmetric. For a compact complex surfaces, in fact, which proved by Sri and Tian, if they, there is this, if they have symplectic form time in the complex structure, then the M4, the, the, your complex surface is a killer match, so it's killer. Uh, so it's still an open problem to see if the situation in higher dimension, complex higher dimension, is different or not. So there is this non killer compact complex manifold which admits. A simplectic form time 
the complex structure. This is not known. Um, you can ask what is a link with SKT geometry. The link is very easy. In fact, what happened uh, when you have an Hermitian simplicity structure, or let's say omega, this is exactly equivalent to assign a special type of SKT metric such that if you take the fundamental form omega and you compute d omega, then omega, this is the bar of some then close to zero four. So in some sense, Hermitian uh, simplicity. And we'll see now some results, some negative results. Uh, one result is the new manifold case. So um, we show with an reactive that Sony that in fact, if you take a new manifold, which is not a torus, we have a left invariant complex structure, then the new manifold can meet any Hermitian symplectic form or equivalent any symplectic form time j. To show the result, we show this other previous result that say, in some sense, this property. Anytime, this is true for any UD group, let's take a UD group, quotient by lattice, and let's say J left invariant, so use invariant complex structure. And um, if, if you take the center of the little group and J of the center intersect, the commutator, then your copper quotient does or not admit any symplectic form time j. This result doesn't use a j is integral, so you can use the result also in the almost complex case. In fact, um, how we we use uh, how we prove this result is very easy, and is using. Uh, I want to mention because it's using the complex structure. In fact. Because if you, are, if you have an in manifold which emits an SKT matrix, then we know that J has to preserve the center. This is true for any SKT assigned in manifold. And then we use the property for the Porter algebra that the commutator intersects the center. So we can apply the previous property we, because we have an element, non zero, in the center such that. J of the center is in the commutator, so we are okay for that. Uh, for SKT solo case, okay, the situation is much more difficult because we don't have such property, for instance, that the J preserve the center and so on. And we have also in this case some negative result. Um, uh, I have some result with uh, Kazuya and Betsoni for almost a billion case and other type of soluble case, but here I mentioned this result with Kazuya. Since uh, generalize the previous one, because of course, um, uh, to ask that a compass manifold is a co of completely solvable uh, case, it means that, that the joint representation has only real eigenvalues, so include the nil manifold case. Okay, and we show um, if you take a compass of manifold of completely solvable type with an invariant complex structure, then uh, this admits a simplectic form time j. Here again, with the process symmetrization process, it doesn't matter to, to ask invariant or not invariant because with the process, if you have something which is not invariant, you can get something invariant. If you don't if m is a complex source. And um, I want to say a few words about this proof because the proof this time doesn't use complex geometry but use only simplectic geometry. Because what we use is a result by Bowers, a cost test, that allow us to do some type of reduction. Because we use that the Lie algebra contains a non trivial isotropic ideal, H. Okay, so that means that you have a non trivial ideal where the, the symplectic form is vanishing. And if the dimension H is one, then one can show, if you take the orthogonal with respect to omega of H, and you quotient by h, this is again as a simplectic form timing a complex structure. And the quotient is still unimodular. And then here is easy at this point, more or less easy, because we can use induction. So we use the induction because in dimension four, this result is two. And so we use induction, the dimension. So if the quotient is scalar, 
we, we, by induction, we can use the disease abelian and then use it that we show that G is abelian. But it's nice that, in fact, we use here subtract G of 3. So it's not clear what would be the general result in the general picture. And um, the last part of the talk, I want to talk, there are many properties about SK chemistry that I could mention, for instance, uh, killer-like condition for the bismuth connection and so on. SKT geometry is quite rich. Um, there is also a relation with generalized complex structure, which is quite important. Uh, what is a generalized complex structure on a manifold of dimension 2n is uh, we have a sub bundle or what? So uh, usually, uh, if you work with complex structures, symplectic structure, you work on the tangent bundle of m. Here we work on the direct sum of the tangent bundle of m plus the cotangent bundle of m. So we have a sub bundle of a complexification of such direct sum such that if you take a plus the conjugate, you get all the complexification. So it means it's maximal. And then. Uh, we ask that the space of section is closed under the Curran bracket. The Curran bracket is a bracket which write the bracket of vector field. Uh, I don't really write the expression. I would only say that one has to be careful that this bracket is still skew-symmetric, the usual bracket, but it doesn't satisfy Jacobi identity. And then we ask that, of course, we have a natural and indefinite metric, neutral metric, pairing essentially using the pairing between the tangent bundle and the cotangent bundle. And we ask that E, such a bundle, is isotropic with respect to this indefinite metric. And um, essentially, this can be viewed also as a complex structure on the bundle, that is sum of Tm plus G star M, which is integral with respect to the Quran bracket. So you can see the analogy with the complex structure. In fact, general complex structure include a special case complex structure, but we will see in a moment include also simplectic structure with special case because you work also in the cotangent bundle. So let's see very quickly how they are included. So if we take a complex manifold, then what is E? The subbundle, the maximal isotropy subbundle before in this case is just the direct sum of T01M plus T10 star. So 10, the section are 104 and they are uh, vector field of type 01. And then um, here I just describe in terms of the direct sum Tm plus Tm, how is the generalized complex structure in use, okay? Just J minus J and J star, the action on the dual. And for symplectic manifold, what is uh, the isotropic bundle? In this case, it's just given by X minus I, the contraction by X of, here there is a mistake, this small omega is a big omega, okay? And the generalized complex structure is just given in terms of endomorphism, between Tm and T star M in this way. Okay, what is the link now with generalized scalar structure? A generalized scalar structure on um, even dimensional manifold to M is in fact a pair of generalized complex structure which commute, which are compatible with the neutral metric on the direct sum of Tm plus T star M. And then you have also this extra condition. If you take minus J1, J2, and you use the metric, the, you ask this is positive sign. What is nice, and here is the language of SKT geometry, that Apostle Gualtieri show that in fact, to have a generalized scalar structure is equivalent to a pair of two SKT structure. You can see that the metric is the same, but the complex structure are different, J plus and J minus. And what you ask? You ask a J plus B omega plus, which is the torsion of the bismuth connection associated to the Hermitian structure J plus G, is the opposite of the torsion of the other SKT structure. Okay, that's exactly the condition. Of course, both the torsion are closed because you, you have a pair of SKT structures. 
Okay, um, the situation is, is very different from geometrical point of view if the two complex structures commute or not. Because if they commute, then if you take the, the just a composition of J plus J minus, this gives an involution of the tangent bundle, and then you have a natural splitting of the tangent bundle in two direct sums, which are the, the eigenvalues with respect to plus one and minus one of Q. And this is what is called usually split generalized scalar structure. Um, in the split case, there is an I classification by a parcel of criteria. One of these is an enormous surfaces. Here I mentioned type SM or S0 is also called. M is the matrix for which uh, that determines in some sense of the, the sole manifold structure. Uh, because this uh, th this compact complex surface is, is a compact quotient of what you have uh, um, the product of upper half um, plane in uh, half plane in C times essentially C, and then you have a group of analytic automorphisms which depend on such unimodular matrix. So maybe that's the structure. And uh, the no split case is also very interesting from a geometrical point of view because when J plus and J minus do not commute, then the commutator define what is called a holomorphic Poisson structure. So in this case, we have a, a two zero a vector field, which is holomorphic. So the bar of this two zero vector field is zero and is also Poisson. Okay, so is uh, Poisson, the Poisson, the bracket of the two of pi over pi. I don't, I don't want to give uh, any detail about that. This is what is called the Schouten bracket. Anyway, you have holomorphic Poisson structure. And uh, what is known about generalized scalar structure on in manifold, on salt manifold? Okay. Uh, Cavalcanti and Gualtieri studied first in Baria generalized, uh, generalized complex structure on in manifold, and they showed that the dimension six is very special because in dimension six, every six dimensional in manifold has an invariant generalized complex structure. Uh, the situation is different for a dimension, dimension eight, and then there are some results in the literature even related to uh, cohomology. Uh, for um, barrier general complex structure in manifold. But the important thing here to remark that the new manifold by result by Cavalcanti cannot admit any barrier generalized scalar structure unless they are toy. Um, how he proved that? Essentially, um, he, has, he used some DGA, so D D different graduated algebra associated to generalized complex structure. And it shows that for generalized scalar, this DGA has to be formal. Okay, and it shows that for Newton case, this is not the case, it's not possible. So for any manifold, we can tell any environment, generalized scalar structure in manifold. But the sole manifold case is different. Um, we have the null surfaces that I described before, as a portion, as I say, of uh, using a unimodular matrix, or with uh, Adriano Tomassini, we show that in, in six dimensions you can have a solid manifold which has such generalized scalar structure, and it turned out to be a T2 bundle of S. I will go back on that. So, a natural question is to see first since the, both the example are in fact the group is almost a billion. So, the first question is what happened for almost a billion case? For the existence of invariant generalized scalar structure. So the first question is classified such manifold, and uh, we 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 success to classify with Paradiso for almost a billion case, which is the only known in the literature that has such type of generalized scalar structure in dimension six. And so yet you can have only these four cases. You can notice that are the same as before, the dimension for SKT, of course, is a subset, and you eliminate the one that was split in one plus five. 
Here, of course, I only consider unimodular case. We also classify the non-unimodular case. But what it turns out that the general scalar structure can only be split. Okay. Um, so here I, I want to mention some remarks and some open problems that we are working on. So the first thing that uh, the first Lie algebra with uh, the parameter equal to p equal to minus one over p, this k1p with such type of value for the parameter is a lattice. This is what we show with uh, Adriano Tomassini and then give the, 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 the compound manifold, which is a tissue bundle over the null surfaces. For the other, the second one, by result by Consol and McCree, we know that for some value, P and S, the parameter, we have a lattice. So in this way, we get new compact general scalar example. So now I finish with these two open problems that we have. Um, the first problem is the following. If you take a generalized scalar diagram, let's work, let's work at the level of the algebra, unimodular, let's say, is necessary almost a billion. The only example that we have are almost a million. And also, if you have a non-killer case, of course, we are interested in non-killer case, you have a non-killer algebra. It's true that any generalized scalar structure such a algebra is necessary split. For the moment, both questions we have a yes, but we consider only uh, the almost abelian case. And the, the, the structure, the set of solvable algebra is quite rich, so the hope is to find other, other examples. And here I finish, I put some reference, part of, uh, related to part of the talk that I mentioned, my, my result. And I thank you very much for, for the attention.